just to give you a quick heads up, India Digital Operators Summit has not only been a reflection point for the industry, but it's also an inflection point, which you pointed out. Um, the beauty is that IDOS has always served as the call to action for the next 12 months till we have the next IDOS. And I think we're, we're, we're doing a pretty uh, good job from that perspective. If we had to look at, Anil, and, and you know, you've been in this space, and if we had to look at the State of the Union, and we had to look at, I have, I've kind of chalked out eight things for 2018, and if I can you know, take you through them and understand from you. The first is, of course, completion of DAS, right? That in itself is an opportunity, because even though um, we're saying that phase four got implemented last year, or actually this year, early this year, there's still another 44 million homes to be digitized. Those 44 million homes essentially are in markets that are rural audiences. Uh, so there's a lot of potential. Maybe a greater skew for players like uh, a HITS player and a DTH player as or, compared or to an MSO. Dish. Or a free, or a free dish. dish, right? Which is where I was looking at the DTH players or, or a HITS player. Uh, because there's, there's huge potential there. First, what are your thoughts on that? How do you see that digitization? You made one comment, and that's, that's correctly, that, that's pretty straightforward, that yes, the MSO business may have not has been as smart as DTH in terms of rolling out set-top boxes, in terms of you know, being appropriate, and yes, we'll require funding for the industry going forward. Um, but the second point is there's this huge rural market. Are there any thoughts? I mean, how does the industry look at that? My belief is that Freedish will take it off. I had a meeting with uh, the Prasar Bharti CEO yesterday evening, and he's very clear that uh, that's an opportunity which he has to serve. He's got two, two, two different uh, products to ship, Analog is being shut off of DD Analog, it's sunset now. No, no, but how can you say, because I'll tell you why I'm asking the question. DD Freedish has a limitation in terms of number of channels. Yeah. Right? As DD Freedish makes the transition to MPEG-4 sure. and puts on the new channels, effectively, as I understand it, technically, the, the reset button hits zero. Sure. Because if I have an MPEG-2 box, I'll only have the 90 channels so they that have I have. A, they have a strategy for that also. Okay. They're going to be using DD Sports. Okay. With all the support that they have to push the MPEG for boxes. Okay. So, you know, what Shashi said is that uh, he's very happy that he's not sharing the rights on cable TV. The sports, he's not sharing the feeds. Because now that's going to allow him to push DD Freedish to all of India, to right. the rural heartlands. And, you know, they're not really paying for the content, the okay. rural heartlands. So that could be a magic switch, one. Secondly, in terms of uh, hits could be another, another, another possibility. Uh, as far as cable goes, it's not viable for them to lay cable, especially sure. the kind of cost which they have to incur, the capital expenditure which they have to incur when they're setting up their head ends. The homes are very far and wide spread out. So delivering cable to them via, uh, delivering television service via cable may be a challenge and for, on profitability. If you look at what, again, I study the hotel results, they're having a challenge in uh, you know, realizing what they've done in phase three areas and phase four areas, wherever they've done, because cash collections, the systems are not in place, you're not, you're not able to your networks are not in place to be able to collect money from whoever, wherever you're putting the last mine, especially if you're doing a secondary acquisition. Okay. And building up is very expensive in rural areas. So HITS is an option, which uh, Hindujas are providing. Right. DD Friedrich is an option. DTH is an option. But DTH, the price points are, price, price points are a little high. That's why the government and Prasar Bharti decided to push Friedrich, which makes it more affordable. But that's why, the DD, that's why the DTH industry is fighting for the open skies policy, right? Because if the open skies policy is respected. And by the way, DD Friedish is also um, pushing for the open skies sure. policy, which means DTH can also create bigger skinny bundles or free bundles like HITS and, and, and other. Yeah, and, and the rural yeah. customer doesn't care. If you go back and see what Bach has come up with, even the older free-to-air shows, or the older shows on free-to-air channels are getting viewership. Okay. And they're getting a lot of advertising. Partho can attest to that. Yeah, so the rural audiences have never seen that content before. For them, it's a first viewing. So they're very happy with what they're getting on DD Freedish. Right. So taking off from DD yeah. Freedish, so that was, that was pretty much the first issue, which was digitization. You tell me about hits. Yes. What is your perspective on hits? Well, I think, I think the, the challenge uh, for any platform, and I, 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 I look at it, while the country is completely DAS, um, the one issue that I believe, the reality on the ground, is that MSOs or, well, any platforms need to have a differentiated pricing, right? Uh, I, I put this line stating very completely that the coming year will see a lot of negotiations between DPOs and broadcasters 
to be able to create some kind of differentiated pricing because irrespective and contrary to popular perception, it is not a one-size-fits-all, right? You have, you have rural audiences, as you mentioned, where the, where the pricing of a package needs to be much more competitive as compared to the pricing of the package. But the broadcasters are not ready for that. But that's the challenge, right? Yeah. That's the challenge for the industry because it is nonsensical to say one-size-fits-all and have a single pricing and say to every MSO, DTH, or cable platform. Yes, it's going to be a challenge because how do you differentiate markets? But knowing the fact that... Uh, Even the geographical definition is not clear. Geographical definition as per municipality yeah. is. So that's a challenge. He may say, yeah. what is a rural area? Is, right. is let's say, a little beyond Gurgaon, a rural area? I, really, definitions are, definitions are challenging. But then that's the, that's the tricky part. Because then, to take your point on broadcasters, then broadcasters need to understand that such a move will inevitably result in three things. One is that... Uh, more th that the DPOs will have to offer subsidies on content to rural markets, which is not the best way to go because obviously uh, there, there's, there's uh, hemorrhaging, not just bleeding in terms of uh, content pricing. Second is they'll need to create, uh, reduce the amount of channels that they put in terms of pay and create FTA bundles as, as a bigger place. Or third, they're going to lose uh, subscribers to the FTA space, which is DD Friedish. So shouldn't broadcasters... You no, know, they don't. I mean, if you look at what Star has done with, uh, with Bharat, Star Bharat, they're clear that, uh, you know, they're playing both the games. Pay TV will probably be a more elitist kind of a thing, uh, you know, with maybe... Uh, and then go for Friedish for, for, you know, they're kind of balancing both sides. So, but it's limited, right? It's still limited. I mean, one, while we all know that Friedish is a challenge and it's, it's, it's happening and we all have a strategy, it's a bit of a slippery slope at the same time, right? But it's a slope which is finding traction if I go by what Bark data is giving me. I go by yeah. Bark, that's the only metric metric which we, which we get on a week on base, week on week basis. Whereas yeah. the studies are done over larger time frame, longer time frames. And a lot of the uh, statistics by companies like Media Partners Asia are based on you know, uh, some kind of formula which they come up with. And those don't, so how many of these numbers are really proved out? You should go back and st study some of the reports. Most of them okay. don't really, uh, pan out as, as uh, you know, as, as, seen, as predicted. As because there are so many dynamic market forces which are there, right. which don't come into play. Who expected demonetization? Who expected GST to come into place? Which would slow down a lot of the plans of the, almost everyone in the industry. Right. So then, taking off from what you're talking about GST and what you're talking about demonetization, one thing comes to mind is obviously linked to a lot of it in, in a way is the tariff order, right? Which has been hanging fire for a long time. Which in effect, um, changes the digital play in the country. Do you see that? Um, how, how do you see that? Yes, you made a point that not all the, um, well, not all the MSO platforms would have a strong enough backend because you need to create uh, bundles that could be unique, bundles that, you know, the, the, the complexities of the backend of the subscriber management system, the conditional access system, the portals needs to be all, uh, you know, fitted together. It can't be retrofitted. It needs to be kind of planned. While that is a challenge, I mean, they will have to obviously fix their back ends, but how do you see the tariff order panning out? Where do you see the... My guess is as good as yours. It's been hanging fire for a long time. Star and Tata Sky are opposing it. And I think... Uh, my, my, I speak to industry people. They tell me it should come through. They don't know when, but right. it should come through. But then when it comes into putting into practice on the ground, the challenging is going to be, is going to be putting it into practice. So probably the old fixed fee deals set-off deals will continue despite that and they'll become under the garb of the tariff or under the way the tariffs will be reflected under that order but there'll be a net net which will happen at the back end between broadcasters and uh, and, and cable operators and MSOs and DTH players. Look, I, DTH players may be ready for this but not the cable cable TV guys. Okay, but yeah, that, I'm 100% okay. okay. sure you go to Hathaway, go to, go to anyone, I, I don't know whether Hits is, whether, uh, we'll speak to Ashok about that, whether, right. whether they are ready with the millions of packages which they'll have to come yeah, up with. Yeah. I don't know if they're ready. No, no there, there are quite a few actually MSOs that have a strong back end already in okay. place and have invested over the last few years. I've are you them. sure? They'll yeah, be able yeah to I'm, I'm very sure because okay. I've had the privilege of actually working with them. Um, hits for sure. A um, couple of good strong MSOs have the back end. Yes, by and large, the, the, not everyone, it's probably the pan Indian MSOs which will have invested in the back end, whether they've invested heavily in the subscriber management system or the CAS. Processes is where the challenge is going to be. Yeah. Workflows is where the challenge is going to be. But by and large, most of them have, uh, you know, uh, and I say this completely with my hand on my heart, is that very often um, we've kind of looked at cable as being 
um, you know, not really the, the highbrow service, but when you actually go and examine uh, the intricacies and the, the innards of the system, one's actually pleasantly surprised. There are a lot of systems and processes, but they're not really tom-toming about it. It's not really seen. It's not really up there. So what you know? can, have they got a lot of, uh, in terms of on the cloud and stuff like yes, that? Yes, yes. Yes. Which of the MSOs, uh, you know? Well, you, you, you look at it, whether it's, it's, it's large pan-Indian players like a Hathaway or an, even an InDigital, the HITS platforms, they all have. Even Autel has a strong back-end that, that's able to... But they still have challenged if you see the latest quarter. No, no, it's challenge not. is, is, is yeah. a given. I, I completely agree with you that the challenge is a given because that's the way the industry is. Any new workflows and the, 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 the irony, not rather the irony, the best part about DTH is a director home. So you have just one customer Absolutely. in between, right? I mean, you don't have anyone in between. In the case of the cable business or the MSO business, you right, also have the mindset layers, is not there. The mindset right? is not there. DTH is always at the mindset yeah. of being able to serve and the customer service aspect. Well, cable guys give you very good service, right. but in terms of IT backend, that's where the mindset is not there. Right. Because it's easier to give a little bill and get the money rather than have so many package packages and market it. That that entire right. training has to come into place. Okay. That that is missing. My under, even with the MSOs. When I speak to them, your, your view might be different. I tend to think uh, they are, there's a lot of work to be done in that. No, area. I think work is required. There's, yeah. there's no doubt, and, and uh, there's a lot of tweaking that happens at the back end. So I w I'm going to go through the fourth point, sure. and then maybe what we'll do is if, if anyone has a question, it'll be good to hear uh, people's views, and then I have the remaining four, uh, you know, eight for 18, 2018, which is try pushing through new recommendations. We've seen a flurry of, you know, recommendations from try. Some very, very uh, uh, positive, well, you're talking about the quality of service recommendations, the infrastructure sharing recommendations, ease of doing business in the country, and the STB technical interoperability. If I look at the ease of doing business, right, uh, or let me actually focus, yeah, the ease of doing business. Try is trying to create an environment that will encourage the DPOs to be innovative, develop new technologies, prototype new services. So they actually are making uh, uh, strong inroads. What's your sense on, on TRI's overall objective for the industry? Because on one side, you've got that. On the other side, you've got an STB interoperability, which started out as a very noble, uh, well-meaning process, but which has, and, and there was just an open house um, day before with, with TRI in terms of the technical challenges that STB interoperability would bring, including you know, affecting swapping, etc. Where's your sense on how these consultation papers are integrating and how they're going forward? See, the ideas are, you know, the, 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 the entire objective is, of course, like you said, very noble. Uh, and, and TRI does talk with, with a lot of the stakeholders before coming up with the consultation papers and before finally drafting rules. Uh, technology is changing very fast. That's a challenge. Investments that are needed are very high. Industry doesn't have the capital, <coughs> nor does it have recourse to capital. Uh, by the time, the, my understanding, by the time the, they become regulations, it probably is, they are one step behind what is happening in the marketplace. The technology going yes. way, leapfrogging like what's I don't know where any of these will be relevant when Geo begins with March right. with FTTH. Right. I have, I don't know whether any of this will make sense at that stage. At that point in time. Yeah, you know, and I think the, the reality is upon us now because the FTTH is being laid out. I'm pretty optimistic, though of course what will happen in the industry, what's happening to telecom, uh, the entire sector is in a bit of a mess, especially right. with the debt and all that. But they want to disrupt, they, and disruption is coming. Right. And it's a severe disruption which nobody, like nobody expects it. Okay. And you don't even, they can't even imagine it. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take, uh, 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 take, a, take a hard stop for a bit here. We have, you know, four more, four more heads and uh, ladies and gentlemen, which are part of our eight for 2018, which is consolidation of the industry that we, we're going to talk about. The free world, which we've covered to a great extent, the FTA and how you know, companies are looking at their challenges. Uh, Reliance Geo, friend or foe to the overall industry. And of course, the last but not the least, the OTT play. Now, I know a lot of it, and, and I'm hoping that this one-on-one this -on -one will set the backcloth because we've got some fantastic speakers and who have huge amounts of experience in this space, and, and we set the agenda for uh, today's uh, session of, of IDOS. But, if you don't mind, I'd, I'm going to Please take go a stop Please and go. figure out if there's anyone who has a question um, in the audience or has um, any interjection. Please feel free, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, I'd, ask, I'd, I'd love it if you could ask questions. Make it very interactive. Come on. Who's volunteering? Shaji? Come on. Can we have a mic for Shaji? Yeah. 
And it's not just the leaders. Anyone in the audience can ask a question. And no question is stupid. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, Anil. Hi, Vince. Now, the, uh, one of the points that I, I uh, picked up during your conversation was that Anil was mentioning about the mindset. Now, somewhere I'm wondering, the, the mindset problem is with the, with the industry or is it with, uh, with us? Because we find that the industry has been able to take the, the transition for, of digitization in a period of four years, which, you know, which is the shortest that has happened in the world. And uh, with not so much of damage as far as uh, uh, retaining consumers are concerned, uh, I would, to, to, to my view, it is a pretty commendable achievement which has happened as far as the cable industry is concerned. And uh, somewhere I am seeing that the cable operator is a guy who has a very flexible mindset. He, he is able to, he, he is so much in touch with the consumer that he is able to change uh, very quickly uh, as to how to handle this consumer and how to retain him and uh, how to uh, adapt himself to, to the requirements of the consumer. So when we say that, you know, he is somebody who is not willing to change, are we right or, are, or, uh, or not? Okay, my, my rejoinder to this, the cable operator is willing to change, but the systems that they have in place, when you see the large, when you see, a, let's say, a geo coming in and rolling out, they are, they, they are not going to stop it. They want to own, own this sector, the delivery of video. It's very clear, 100 million subscribers, quality, questionable on 4G. They want to do the same in FTTH. So it's the, what I'm looking at is while there'll be a one-on-one -on -one with the consumer at home, there's, this, there's another force here, which is coming. And that will probably, you know, there'll be a balance between the two, between the massive drive that Geo will come with and the influence that will have on consumers. Free, you're looking at 180 bucks for 450 channels or 200 rupees. You're looking at bandwidth prices which are so dirt cheap. You know, that fidelity and loyalty will go away at that stage. Didn't we all, didn't most of us subscribe to 4G? Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm not saying it's bad, but that, that bond will break at that stage. I'm not disputing your uh, view of uh, disruption. That's something which, uh, you know, people are uh, foreseeing and uh, I'm sure uh, they will be preparing also for that. And disruption is never the end of anything. It probably is the beginning of a lot of things. Um, I would pass the discussion to somebody else if somebody know, wants to. You, you have a view on that? No, I, I mean, I, I, I think Shaji and me are arguing on the same side that I believe the MSOs, whatever one may say, uh, of, you know, are, have a different mindset or whatever. But when you actually go and spend time in the innards, in the engine room, you'll be absolutely pleasantly surprised. I have, I've right? been to head ends. I've been to head ends. No, no, I'm talking about the SMS systems. The and you know, I, I must share something, and Shaji will, will definitely. Uh, Hear me out on it. Do you know that a lot of the MSOs have already started working on the tariff orders and have already started dummy runs of packages? Am I right? Yeah, yeah. there are exceptions right? I'm saying. There, there are, are already, exceptions. You know, like your KCCL is an exception. I'm not saying it's not. It is an exception. There are, there are islands of excellence in where nobody will have, nobody will be able to penetrate. But for the mass, you look, the MSOs, how, how much do they constitute of the whole cable sector? The MSOs, all of them put together. No, the I mean, you're talking about 59% right. of the India subscriber base, as you point Cable to TV, I'm saying the MSOs, not the. MSOs, the okay. Yeah. Okay. So they would be how much? About 40%, 35%? The rest of the 60% is, you know, up for the asking. Think about it, uh, Shaji. I do, I do believe that the cable sector has a one on one. And there are, but there are islands of excellence. On the large part, there's going to be a stream rolling. There is a consolidation spate happening, right? We, we've seen it happening in the DTH space. Uh, we've seen it happening. We've seen talks happening in the uh, MSO space as well, in terms of mergers and acquisitions, etc. Obviously, there is a critical mass or a threshold for a DPO, irrespective of whether it's uh, cable, MSO, um, uh, whether it's cable or DTH or otherwise, 
there is a critical mass for it to be able to be a sustainable business. Do you see that in the, in the next one year? Do you see a greater trend happening? Uh, because you mentioned also about investor confidence. So, you know, leaving aside the fact that there is saying, yes, there is no investor confidence overall in the industry, for example, as, as a thought. But there's mergers happening, there's acquisitions happening, there's consolidation happening. Do you, do you see that trend? I see that happening. I see, but there'll be, as I said, there'll yeah. be islands of excellence. Okay. As a whole in the industry, you know, the industry is very divided, first of all. Yeah. It has to come together. Uh, and they haven't managed it. My perception is they haven't managed it for decades. While we've done the digitization, how have we achieved it? Think about it. It's laudable. Everything's laudable. Could we have done it better? These are afterthoughts. So do I see it happening? I see, I see again, islands of excellence. You know, maybe there's consolid consolidation happening in some parts. Maybe two of the guys, maybe somebody may just exit because they're finding it very hard going. You know, the c continuous investment you have to pour in. My understanding is, you know, a hits platform like Next Digital could be uh, bleeding to the tune of 30, 30, 30, 35 crores a month until you get to profitability. How many people have the courage to, uh, you know, absorb those losses? How many, and, how many, how many, how many businessmen? Yeah, how many businessmen have it? And, but you as, see and as competition comes in from Freedish, as competition comes in from Geo, uh, you know, some people will just wilt and sell out or shut shop. Some will, will get together. So there'll be islands of excellence. I don't see it happening consistently all over. But you are seeing a right-sizing trend happening, right? We've seen it across literally all DPOs. There is a right-sizing of the organization. We're seeing it more and more happening. I mean, across the board, right? You, 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 you're seeing that. So that's on the consolidation. Then I want to spend, actually, we already did spend time on, on uh, the free world, right? Which is the, the, um, um, which is the FTA uh, business. You know, there's, so I won't really dig into that. That was my sixth point. The seventh was, of course, Geo, friend of four. Um, one interesting thing, while DPOs are concerned about the deep pockets that Geo may have, right, in terms of it, it's also in a way giving a fillip to the DPO's own businesses because the cost of broadband connectivity, and there was just an article recently that uh, content on, on, on mobile broadband has gone up as compared to content on Wi-Fi driven, you know, fixed networks. So. DPOs can leverage that, right? There, 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 is a, there is a strong potential to leverage it, right? But the pricing, how will anyone match this, these prices that Geo is offering? Please tell me. Okay, you're talking about purely from a content pricing no, I'm structure? No, talking, I'm talking from a data price point. No, no, I'm saying leave aside the data for yeah. a moment. I'm saying I'm a DPO. I've got content. I have how a product many DPOs that have can... Con how many DPOs have invested in content? No, I'm saying how looking at the larger DPOs. But how many of them have invested in content? Uh, no, no, I'm talking about... Broadcaster content. Okay. But now I've offered it on a uh, non-linear service. Okay. Whether o I don't want to use the term OTT because that's you know, kind of narrowing it down. But I'm saying non-linear service, whether it be uh, streaming, etc. Is there a possibility to, to leverage the, the, the geo juggernaut to push my agenda as, an, as a DPO? As I, as I keep, uh, when, I speak to, when I speak to certain MSOs, uh, while the broadcasters are giving the content to geo, they're not open to giving the content to cable OTT, OTT services. That's my understanding. They are a little wary of giving the content to them for free. That's one feedback I've got. Yeah. So I don't know whether they'll be able to build their OTT services based on the cable TV content that they have. They'll probably have to come up with other content to put on their OTT services. See, also sticking yeah. with sticking with Geo, right? Uh, no, correct me if I'm wrong. So, no, no, you're, yeah. you're probably you're probably right. I mean. As they say, you know, it's six of these, half a dozen of the other. It depends on which way you're looking at it. Yeah. One of the worries that uh, DPOs have, and rightfully so, is the STB technical interoperability. Earlier, you know, was, was uh, if you looked at it, it was swapping of boxes, where you had to physically, you know, swap boxes in the industry. But with the new technical interoperability, it becomes easier to do that by just swapping, um, you know, cards, as in, as in uh, sure. CAS cards, right? Isn't that a bit of a, uh, 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 you know, you're actually opening the door to the bigger players and you're stifling your, your DPOs existing, isn't, isn't, don't you see that? Because then someone like, and I'm sorry we're using the term, uh, you know, we're using actual names, but a larger player coming in, for instance, and being able to acquire uh, customers of a smaller DPO, all by swapping, he doesn't even need to swap boxes now. All he does is swap, you know, viewing cards. But it all depends on the service that the bigger players are offering. If the, yeah. small, if the bigger player is offering more services, you know, if, 
apples will have to be apples. Apples can't be oranges because a smaller play, be, play may be having different services. So while you're right, but there could be, you know, contradictions in there also. Okay. So a bigger player may come with a larger basket of services compared to a smaller player. Which becomes the challenge. Which becomes a terms. challenge for interoperability itself. Right. So he may have to bring in his own boxes rather than his yeah, own Because boxes. innovation then suddenly gets stifled as yes. well, right? I mean, as a larger player, I have something innovative and when I swap a box or as in... When, when I swap I the card, the box may yeah, not... Yeah, yeah. may not really deliver that. The last thing, Anil, the eighth point on the, on the 8 for 18 is the OTT services. Um, we've seen an increase in terms of the number of people and the mouse, right? The monthly sure. um, active users uh, metric that has been there. We've seen nearly 100% increase as compared to the uh, half yearly of, of the previous year. We've not seen really the price point and we've not seen, you know, revenues going up. We've seen, yes, the numbers and, and the big guys have, have been doing well, uh, whether it's, you know, Hotstar or Voot or Eros or any of the alt ballers, all of them have been able to make strong inroads into the Indian market. How do you see that trend happening? I mean, well, it's like television in the early days, cable and satellite television. You had to have a seven year time plan, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a roadmap. You didn't make money in the first two, three years. Now these guys know, they know that they're not going to make money. It's investment time. So it's build up time for them. It's customer acquisition. Yeah. It's con understanding what the customer wants, technology, whether it can be stabilized. So on the OTD side, that's what's happening currently. Do you see, do you see integration with the DPO? Can a DPO leverage it as a ring fencing or a flanking strategy to prevent entry Using of the existing yeah. OTTs yeah. or his own OTT? Existing OTT. Yeah, yeah, I definitely think. But if it becomes a commodity, then it's a commodity. Okay. If everyone does it, it becomes a commodity. Okay. So if you're getting yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. So these are the eight trends pretty yeah. much for 2018, right? We, we just to, you know, and I'm sorry, um, I normally like prefer a piece of paper, but then because this was a high tech summit, I had it put down. You know, you've been asking me <laughs> my view. I'd yeah. like your views on all of these. So, sure, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. But just to tell you what are the eight points that I looked at, right? So I looked at the fact that DAS, and I'll give you my view on that, the fact that 40 million, 44 million homes are still required to be digitized, right? And that's where there is a great opportunity. There is a rural opportunity. That's where, as we started off, DTH and HITS platforms, uh, HITS can really make serious inroads because those are markets which require content. They don't, and free dish, of course, because they don't want to be treated as the lesser model. They want to have equal content as compared to a, a, a phase two or phase three market or even a phase one market. Uh, we've achieved, as Shaji pointed out, digitization faster than anyone else in the world, mandated digitization. That was the first thing in completion of, of DAS. Um, STBs, as you rightly pointed out, yes, that's a clear challenge, um, where the industry has accepted that we rolled out STBs not because we wanted to roll out disparate STBs, as compared to, say, DTH was probably better organized, but as the MSO industry, and I speak, you know, having worked with a lot of the, the MSOs, we were also constrained by the timelines and by the challenges that were there and by the availability. So a lot of boxes got the rolled Chinese. out. Exactly. A lot of boxes got rolled out that if you, if you looked at it in hindsight, as they say, hindsight is a beautiful thing because it's 2020. Um, in hindsight, you wouldn't have done it. You would have probably done it differently. But that's still a challenge and that is going to be. So funding for better boxes or better products is going to become a challenge. So that's in terms of uh, the when first When do you point. see that happening? How many years? See, you see, see that the, in the next? See, I see one yeah, and a half year. If yeah. they don't do it, they're going to be in trouble. I, I think, I think what's, what's happened, uh, and this is something that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm privileged to be part of the, the ground uh, reality, is that customers by and large are not unhappy with their standard definition viewing experience, right? It's when they're given, and Dish TV recently started this HD. all for HD, right? I remember um, uh, recently. But when they're experiencing HD, high definition, they're really blown away because they've never, not, not really experienced it. And we're seeing a greater penetration. So rather than seeing a better set-top box coming in, you're seeing an upsell happening. Sure. Uh, you're seeing an MSO or a DTH or any platform going in and saying, you know, you have a SD box, here's the experience of HD. And to be fair, this is the one place where broadcasters also um, see eye to eye, you know, with, with, with platforms, DPOs, and are happy to push their high definition content at a probably a low price point uh, to, to, to increase penetration in the market in HD. So that's on the, on, the, on, the, on the first piece. I think the second piece, different pricing for different DAS areas, um, Anil, is going to be a, a challenge. Broadcasters will need to figure out a way, right, on how to structure pricing for different 
DAS markets because... And how do you see that happening in DTH and geographical I, but, demarcation? Like I said, I, I completely agree with you. It's, 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 it's wishful thinking. It's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here and, you know, drawing up this uh, fairy, fairy tale cloud. But the fact is, if it's not created sooner rather than later, one of three things can happen. DPOs have, will have to be forced to subsidize content to phase three and four markets, which is a huge challenge. Or DPOs will have to severely limit the content that they're delivering to phase three and four markets because obviously pricing is a, is a big thing. And Mr. Manzukani pointed out the 40 rupee bundle, for instance. Or the third thing is, then customers are going to start moving to, to, to DD free dish. So broadcasters too will have to wake up to that, that, that threat and try to figure out what is the way that they can uh, work with DPOs to be able to make it successful. So that was the second thing on that. On the tariff order, we hope that the tariff order gets implemented uh, uh, over the next year. Again, I have no qualms in, in, in you know, sticking my neck out here and saying that I've been privileged to see the MSOs and their readiness and the fact that a lot of them have already rolled out pilot projects uh, to be able to, to, to meet with the tariff order. Not everyone, not everyone. The smaller MSOs are going to face a challenge. How they'll adapt and what kind of time frame will be given and how much of hand-holding the government will permit is, is something that, that will go for up for discussion. And do you see owner interest continuing in the cable business, especially a lot of the owners yeah. are losing interest yeah. in the cable business? You know, uh, in the distribution, video you know, distribution business. I've, I've seen this, as they say, water finds its own level, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not the first time that we've had trends, right? We've had trends in the past. We've had the um, MSO digitize, sorry, we've had digitization of phase one. We've had digitization of phase two. We've had DTH coming in as a competitor for the cable business. I'm talking about way back 2005, 2006. But every time, the industry is a very strong, um, resilient industry in order to be able to make that leapfrog. And your question, your, my, my guess is as good as yours, that how much of promoter uh, you know, interest is going to be there? But I think just given the fact that where the industry, the way things are panning out, is that yes, there is a robustness in, in terms of, and resilience in the mindset. That listen, we have a challenge. The beauty is that it's, there's not a single platform Maybe there are a couple of platforms who have not, don't believe in it, but there are most of the platforms are acutely aware of what the challenge is. No one's living in a cocoon. No one's living in a bubble saying, "Oh, I'm going to, you know, oh, I don't know what's going to happen," you know. No, we'll some, of the, some of the groups right? are moving towards broadband. Exactly, and, the, yeah. and you know, video yeah. is becoming yeah. marginalized in the, yeah. as part of the business plan. Right. So that leaves the window open for video delivery to other players. Exactly. No, I, I agree with yeah. you. But the beauty is that there's no one who's saying, you know woe is me, you know, I don't know yeah. what's going to happen. Sure. They're, they're happy to take on the challenge and, and create a... a, a, okay. a, a sort of so that was on, on the tariff order. The try new recommendations, Anil, that's, that's something that's really interesting. Um, I'm very delighted, for example, on the uh, ease of doing business because it means um, DPOs, whether DTH or cable or OTT or others, can experiment and innovate with new technologies. Uh, which hitherto were probably limited or not permitted under the, the, the current guidelines in, in the country. So that's a, a very good thing. STB interoperability, I, I, I personally have my reservations. And my reservations are uh, more from the facts, st stand out from the fact that whatever be the interoperability, it should also make sure that it's not as easy to swap um, services. There's got to be a very legit process to be able to swap services with a very legit uh, pro, you know, how do I put it, technical uh, parameter there. Um, in terms of the fifth thing, consolidation, I, I hope to see the industry slowly picking up, so that, that, that's something that we've, we've been looking at. Um, the free world is, is DD free dish. While I'm with you in terms of how the numbers pan out, etc., when the reset button gets pressed, I'm curious to see what happens at that point sure. in time, right? It's, it's more from that perspective on, on six. In terms of the last one, Reliance Geo, we just spoke about, and I you you know, concur with told you my. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're, they're the ones with the deep pockets, right? But I personally believe that deep pockets is not necessarily the answer to everything. You know, you can, you can go ahead and buy everything that you want, but you also got to make a business out of it. So there are challenges even for them because there's a strong entrenched industry, whether it be cable or whether it be DTH. It's not going to be a picnic all the way, Definitely. right? It's not going to be as easy as people think that I've got, you know, 20,000 crores in my pocket. I'm going to go and buy. It, 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 it's, it's not going to be that, that, that easy. So I'm, I'm quite... Uh, and last, the OTT services, like you, I believe that there's a strong potential. And I also believe there's a strong potential for OTT to play a greater integration role, perhaps with the DPOs and 
create flanking and business strategies. So those are my eight for 18, 2018. Great. Uh, thank Neil, you. Thank you very much. Um, and and I am pleasure. going to be, Ashok and all of you, I am going to be pushing the buttons. <laughs> I am you. going to be pressing your buttons. So be ready for that. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.